Hi folks, I'm Brent and welcome to the first video in my new series on building a timber frame woodworking shop. I'm building a 25 by 40 foot high posted cape modeled after the high posted cape that is in Steve Chappell's book, A Timber Framer's Workshop. I took a couple of Steve's courses a couple years ago and I've modified this frame a little bit with his blessing, but I'm really excited about this build because I've been doing furniture making and design for quite some time in all different styles. I've also been cabinet making for quite some time and helping with kitchen redesigns and renovations, but I've also been a timber framer for quite some time, building small and large frames for a number of different people all around Eastern Canada. But I have never had a proper place to work, and today are the first steps in changing that. So let's take a closer look at what I'm building. So overall, the footprint, as I said, is 25 by 40, and that's composed of uh, two 12-foot bays and one 16-foot bay. So this is a three bay, four bent building. What's not depicted in these pictures is uh, sort of a linter th addition I'm going to put on the side. And that's the side, that's the portion of uh, the overall building that will be heated 24-7. And uh, that's where I'll do my finishing and that's where I'll keep my computer and, and store finishes and, and glue and whatnot. It saves me from having to heat the whole building um, for on those periods in the winter when I'm not actually working in there. I'm not exactly sure how big that little section uh, is going to be, uh, but the main working space, of course, is uh, about a thousand square feet downstairs. Um, the posts are quite tall, so the upstairs functional lit working space is just around 800 uh, square feet. So that's 1,800 square feet overall, plus a little enter to the side. Now that's obviously not a really big building, um, but uh, it ought to be a, a massive improvement from what I have right now. And by its design, it will be quite easy to add on to later on if I find I, I need more space. The building actually contains a number of really interesting joints that I plan on documenting in the video series. Just one as an example here is the wedged half dovetail tie beam to post connection. It's, uh, it'll be an interesting joint to lay out really well in rough timbers, um, but I plan on, on uh, documenting really well the layout process as well as cutting process for that joint. So when I say I'm starting the build now, really I started a couple of years ago. A friend of ours has uh, is a farmer and he has oh, many hundreds of acres of woodlot and we struck a deal with him to uh, buy some standing trees from him. So I actually cut, yarded and uh, milled all the timbers myself. So sometime in mid-January, Ran and I strapped on our snowshoes and went out and uh, marked a number of trees. And um, sometime a couple of weeks later, uh, we went out and started um, started dropping them. Now we did this, of course, in the dead of winter because uh, white pine is prone to sap stain, and of course, doing so in the winter reduces the likelihood of that. As it turned out, that winter the snow was just way too deep to consider trying to extract the logs. So what we ended up doing was um, driving some small logs underneath the larger ones, just to make sure that when they did settle down, as the snow dropped. Um, it was easy to get a choker chain around them, or if we didn't get to them for a while, at least they weren't laying in the dirt. So that exercise took us right up until maple syrup season. My wife and I make maple syrup on a small scale uh, every year and really enjoy that. And um, by the time that was, uh, that was all wrapped up, it was time to get into the, to the log yard and sort things out a little bit. It was hard to get a sense of the lay of the land with so much snow down, so the piles were, weren't sorted as well as they could. So I spent a bit of time a um, bit of time sorting out the logs in preparation for the arrival of the sawmill. I ended up hiring a sawmill from a fellow just down the road. And it's um, roughly two or three year old um, Wood Miser LT40 HD. So the HD, of course, stands for hydraulic. So it had the hydraulic uh, loading arms as well as the hydraulic log turner, which of course is um, really nice. It had a capacity of about 21 feet. Um, so we had to get a little creative when cutting the 25 foot tie beams. But in the end, it all worked out really well. We also had some uh, oversized logs that uh, required a little bit of uh, carving just to make sure the carriage could pass all the way along. But uh, there's an interesting little side story about the brace material. I had some brace stock already from some ash trees that were cut, um, that I cut on, on our property. And, um, but I needed some more. And uh, coincidentally, the farmer had recently cut some uh, oak trees that he thought were just too nice for firewood. So um, we struck a deal and I bought them from him and uh, milled them up into, uh, into brace stock. 
And of course, uh, being white oak, uh, and of course you always get some boards on the outside of the timbers you're after, and uh, we ended up with some really nice, uh, really nice boards for later use in the shop. In the end, the milling process took about two and a half to three weeks with a couple of rain days in there. Once we were all done, I took a little break and then started hauling the timbers home. I ended up using the brace stock as a really stable, strong base for the pile. It's really important that you make your pile really flat and really level. Otherwise, you risk um, seasoning a twist or a bend of some sort into the timbers over time. And there we are. That's one of the two main piles of timbers for this project. For the spring, summer, and fall, I just lightly covered it to keep the rain off. This allowed uh, free-flowing air from all sides just to dry off the surface moisture on the timbers, just to help prevent any mold or mildew that might might otherwise want to grow on the surface. Um, and for the winter time, just to keep snow from blowing through it, I wrapped it all up in a heavier-duty tarp, and there it stood until uh, just a couple weeks ago when I started uh, started to unwrap them and uh, record this footage. Twenty-five foot long, eight by twelve tie beams. They, of course, roughly determine the width of the building. And uh, these are eastern white pine. And uh, I had to set up a fairly elaborate system for for tarping them because it is quite windy here. Um, other than a couple of places where it looks as if the uh, water seep through the tarps because tarps just don't last very long. They look pretty good. So let's see how the other timbers fared. So other than peeking underneath here a couple of times, uh, I really had no idea how these things had fared over the over the last couple of years. Uh, of course there's always a concern about uh, some kind of an insect infestation or perhaps uh, moisture getting in or under there that you didn't notice uh, causing a lot of surface uh, molding or even preliminary stages of rot. Um, and I didn't see any indications of that, uh, but I hadn't really given them a thorough, a thorough look over since, uh, since piling them all there. So, of course, this was an awfully exciting stage. I was, uh, I was a little bit nervous as well. Okay, so here we are. That was a bit of an adventure getting that tarp off. Uh, it's an industrial grade tarp, so it's very heavy anyway. But on top of that, it had a lot of frozen ice on it and whatnot. So, uh, I'm happy. I think they seasoned quite well. I did, uh, unfortunately, evict a couple of squirrels and maybe even a raccoon. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, there's not a lot of checking, so I think piling these and seasoning them underneath this uh, large tree here and uh, you know, allowing them to dry very slowly. Um, I think that really paid off. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do, there was a bit of a method to my madness here when I piled these. The timbers I wanna start with are the tie beams as well as the exterior posts. Now, aside from the length of the building, those determine much of the, uh, much of the silhouette of the building otherwise. So in other words, those will determine if I have to redesign some aspects of, of the rafters, for example, to deal with a, a building envelope that is slightly smaller than my original plans. So what I wanna do is I wanna work those timbers first so I can get a sense of how they're gonna turn out and then I'll move on, then I'll move on to the other ones. So I tried to put uh, the posts on top over there. Those are the tie beams. They're completely separate because they're, they're much, much longer. So I'm gonna load the tie beams and the exterior and uh, interior posts first and uh, we'll see how we make out. Well I think we'll wrap it up here. I'm thrilled that all these timbers seem to really season so well. I don't think I have uh, any rejects in there at all or any timbers I'll even really have to repurpose. Um, in the next video I plan on discussing in more detail what I plan on covering in this little video series. 
I plan on trying to, a different approach to documenting this build from some of the other YouTube series I've seen on timber frame construction. We'll also get a uh, first look at the workspace that I'll be using over the next few months on this project. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.